Welcome to Freak Out 2017. My name is Sharon Ross, and I am the interim chair of the television department. And I'm here to welcome you today to this extraordinary event that encompasses seven different classes and departments from across the college. The material you're going to see tonight is political. It is a very political year. And in fact, the students were tweaking content right up to this morning. So they are doing it as if they really were in the real world. And this is as close as you can get. And they are doing a phenomenal job. So my job is to not take up too much time and to let you see the real magic. So I'm just going to do a few needed thanks to the many, many people and entities that have supported this production throughout the year. And I'm going to ask you to hold your applause till the end so we can get through them all and get on to the show. Uh, first, thank you to the School of Media Arts, Dean Eric Freeman in particular, and former interim Dean Constantine Rosinario. And a special thanks to Charles Castle, who helped us find the money where we needed to find the money to make things happen. A special thank you to the Narinsky family grant from TV alum Ron Narinsky, class of 1970, who is here today with his family. Thank you, Ron, for attending. Some of the Narinsky family grant money this year went to this production that you are seeing tonight. Thank you to Chris West and FrequencyTV.com for their support with the live stream. A special thank you to Nikki Hoffman, the production coordinator. <laughs> Nikki, on a regular basis, comes to me and asks me about things like, can we have horses? Can we have people flying? Thank you for the cutting saw you just bought me. It can't be done without her. A special thanks to our engineering team, Kevin Kantorinsky and Bob Brink. They are in the remote truck outside making sure this thing actually works for us. A thank you to Frank Sperano at the Media Production Center, which is where you are at, for helping us schedule the time in this lovely soundstage. I'd like to thank all the television staff who have done an extraordinary, extraordinary job under very trying circumstances this year, with a special shout out to David Jude Green, who we go to when anything gets crazy, and he just does it. So thank you, David. A, th <laughs> it's true. a thank you to all the television faculty, especially those who are here tonight, but a special thanks to Eric Scholl, our associate chair. He, he has been the glue for this production throughout the year, even when all hell was breaking loose, which it pretty much was on a daily basis. And to our faculty who have guided the students through this production, makeup, Glenise Hand, costume, Melissa Obler, music from Kubele Uner, lighting, Frank Partipillo, and our producing, writing, and directing team, Janet LaMonica, Tyler Kempf, Brady Hyde, and Gary Prokes. And last but not least, of course, a special thank you to the students, especially those of you who are graduating and leaving us. And I want to give two special shout outs to two students who have consistently risen above and beyond this year. Our head writer, Will Nicholson. And our event producer, Abby Guerra. And as they say, on with the show. Hello. Hello. 
Hello. Hi, Melania. No, I'm afraid I have to work late tonight. No, no, Steve is not making me. He works for me, believe me. <laughs> Hello, honey. She hung up. Unbelievable. <laughs> Donald. Donald. Oh, God, Steve, is that you? I I'm working, I promise. Donald. <laughs> it's me. Oh, thank goodness. I thought you were banned in here to take my Twitter away again. Who are you? What do you want? You don't recognize me? Come closer, Donald. Come closer. Reagan? <laughs> Is that really you? Well, in life, I was once called Ronald Reagan, and like you, I ignored the climate. I put my faith in coal and oil, and now I am cursed to wander the scorched wasteland I created. You mean Texas? <laughs> yes. No, no, this can't be real. You're just a bit of fake news. Ooh, I need to get I back. I am real. I am. And if you don't heed my warnings, Donald, you too will fall victim to climate change. Rising oceans will flood all of your oceanfront properties. Not Mar-a-Lago. Yes. Mar-a-Lago. Which, by the way, that just means, like, sea lake. <laughs> like, like, what's that about? What do you want with me? I am here so that you do not suffer the same terrible fate. Okay, okay, let me guess. Over the course of the night, I'm going to be visited by three spirits, and they're all gonna tell me how my ways are very badly. Although, you know, I have spirit friends, the best spirit friends, and they call me, they say, Donald, Wait, you would know, you just shut up, just shut up! <laughs> Normally, yes, we would do it one at a time, but you don't have, you're not, you're not worth the time. So we're just gonna bring them in one by one. Ooh. Ghost of climate's past. Woo. Oh, finally. <laughs> Someone to put an end to all this nonsense. Excuse me, would you please tell this B lister here that the climate has always changed bigly? The climate has often made great changes, but at a much slower rate. But it still changed, still changed. Well, normally it takes tens of thousands of years for the climate to change as much as it has in the past decade. So we'll build the world a thermostat. Tremendous, huge, huge, China. What are you talking about? I have no idea. Uh, I've been faking this whole time, really. I never thought I'd get this job. I am the ghost of climate's present. We've already passed the point of no return. The climate will reach temperatures this Earth has never seen. Fantastic. No more liberal snowflakes. Amazing. Even if you stopped all of the world's production right now, there would still be widespread famine and destruction! But it could get even worse. Okay, even worse? No, no, no. I've been through this rodeo before. Bring in the ghost of climate yet to come. I've seen Magoo. Ew, everyone knows Muppets is the best version. I like the Bill Murray one. Doesn't matter. Either way, they all have Tiny Tim, and let me tell you, weak guy, Tiny Tim. Okay. <laughs> all right, just go, climate yet to come. Get in here. Scott Pruitt, head of the EPA. Mr. President, I don't think you need to worry about the climate anymore. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> what have you done? Let's just say I put the final nail in the climate's coffin. And as it dies, so will all who will live on Earth. Your time is running out, Donald. Free yourself from the chains of your own ignorance. Ooh. 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 Put that down. That's mine. That's mine. Unbelievable. Mr. President, I can't believe it. Were they coming on to me? 
No, sir. This is the most unfair thing ever. No, sir, this is Freak Out Live. <laughs> it out into the town square, so now there's only five of us in this godforsaken town. Oh, Leanne, I've loved you since the day I saw you shoveling Cal Dookie in the courtyard. <laughs> Run away with me. Now that Calvin's behind bars, we can finally be together. Uh, Boone, I I'm sorry, but my heart belongs to Calvin. Beth, is that you? My love, my soulmate. No, oh. it's Leanne. Ooh. You shot Beth while trying to shoot Ray. They're both dead. Oh, Leanne, my love, my soulmate. <laughs> you are so beautiful. Come with me, Leanne. Calvin doesn't love you like I do. No, Boone, can't you see? I'm always gonna love him, no one else. I'll choose him, Calvin, always. Oh, Le oh. my wound. I'm a-dying. Calvin! Calvin, no! <laughs> oh, Leanne! Well, I guess I better leave you to your grief. Oh, wait! Huh? Don't go. But, but you don't love me. I've, uh, uh ch changed my mind. But your heart belongs to Calvin. It did, uh, but now I've chosen you, Boone. Well, now that Calvin's dead, it kind of feels like I'm your second place. You were only second to my heart, Boone, but now you're first in my head. Oh, Leanne! Oh, Boone! Boone, what are you doing? Martha! I told you, I love Leanne now. We're over. Well, if I can't have you, no one can. Holy oh, oh, No! Oh, God! Die, traitor! Martha! Uh, turns out I still think you're kind of pretty. Hold on there, cowboy. Martha's mine. We're engaged. She's the only other woman in this town. Uh, well, uh, I, I love Boone now, so why don't you just get on up and get out of here? Now. I love you too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone I know is dead. I'm alive. Boone, what? I don't know. I don't understand how. It was all a part of my plan. Now, how about we take a drink to celebrate? You poisoned me. Yes, sir, I did. A two brute. What? <laughs> did it work? <laughs> you betcha. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Now we can be as happy as a puppy with two peckers and no rough talk from them there uppity strangers. Oh, boo. <laughs> huh? Sleep tight. You old frat. Oh, Calvin. Oh! I told you I'd 
You did it, baby! Woo All right. Now let's get out of here, rob this town blind, and start a high cotton life up north. Come on, baby! Well, I'll be darned. It worked! You did it, Sheriff. You killed the baddest cow folk in all the Wild West. Now we can continue to live our lives in peace. Mine is Beth and Ray, who actually died. God, God rest, rest their, their souls. souls. Well, I guess we should dance to express our newfound joy. <laughs> Okay, class, welcome to Sexual Education. Oh. I'm Coach Willis. Yeah. I coach basketball. All right. Yes, yes. That's my boy. I'm Miss Martin. I teach ninth grade history. So we'll be filling in for Mrs. Jenkins, who's out sick with the clap. What the heck? Ew. So last week she told you to write down questions you have about sexual intercourse. Why don't you do the honors? Don't mind if I do. How long does a woman's period last? Ever. Well, it varies, but the average cycle usually lasts from three to seven days. Oh my gosh. That's long. That is a long time. Your turn, coach. Oh. <clears throat> Oof. Pass? You can't pass. Um, <clears throat> is it normal to have hair down there? <laughs> hey. No room for joke questions. This is serious. <laughs> okay, just answer the question, coach. <clears throat> is it normal? No. Oh my god. Yes. No. Yes. It is perfectly normal to grow body hair during puberty. Oh, hairy boy. Hair normal. That one surprised me. Uh, I'm going to try another one. You got this, coach. Uh, <laughs> do girls pee? <laughs> <laughs> Of course not. No, yes, they do. Girls there. pee. Uh, what the heck? Ah, how do I know if I'm ready to have sex? Well, uh, this question is very delicate. When it gets hard. Come on. No, hard, baby. He's always no, hard. This is very personal, so only you know if you're ready to have sex. You heard her, kids. Only you know when it's ready. Coach, can I speak to you for a second? Is your problem? I've never done anything like this before. I'm gonna try again. So, mm, how do I put on a condom? You don't. Great. <laughs> Allow us to demonstrate. Now, opening a condom is difficult. I recommend using your teeth. No, using your teeth will cause the condom to tear. Don't. That explains so much. Good idea. I'll get the banana ready. Okay. Right. There's nothing to get ready. All right, kids, so just. No. Oh, God. You don't. That's not how penis. Owie. Okay. And then you just kind of. Uh, uh -oh. No. Okay. Oh, he's going to push it. No, that's not. All right, kids, this is what. Oh. what's not oh, supposed God. to happen. No, 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 no. No, it's not. Oh! oh. No. That poor girl. That no, poor stop. Girl. Wait. Oh. 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 No. That's really sad for her. Oh. Unbelievable. You should not be teaching this class. You should be taking it. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. One of us. One of us. One of us. Okay, class. All right. Uh, just remember to do the worksheet on the Volvo. All right. Bye. <laughs> So where's that big old G spot my players keep talking about? Well, it, it's uh. And should I keep my socks on or just you know take them off? That's a. How about Showtime, Cinemax? You know to keep her on her toes. Yeah. What?
Act. Respect the environment. Environment? Whoa! If you're polluting, you, you got, got to go! go. Let's hear it again for the Beastie Boys. Wow, what a turnout. I am so happy that so many people could come out to this B memorial service. <laughs> Next to speak, we have passionate sixth grader Lena Marzuko to share a poem she wrote about bees. <sighs> bees. Thank you, bees. You pollinated flowers and kept fruit on the trees. Bees, we didn't mean to make you diseased. Bees, we're sorry, bees. Incredible. It's so amazing that our youth can voice our universal opinion. We have all been devastated by the loss of the bees, and we all regret not taking action sooner to Speak try and for yourself. <laughs> Who said that? I did. Me. Rodney Spodney, of course. Rodney Spodney, the town quack. <sighs> you don't feel bad that all the bees are dead? Feel bad? I'm stoked they're dead. Oh, what? oh, can it, you wieners? Rodney, why are you, why are you happy about this? First off, bees sting ya. Youch. That's not a good reason, you baby. Yes, it is. Is that the only reason you're glad they're dead? No. Uh, back in 06, when I was getting my basement refinished, I got an infestation of bees, and it extended the process an extra six months. No one cares about your damn basement. Hey, I love my basement. Ronnie, don't you understand that this will have drastic effects on us all? Okay? Fruits. Okay? Vegetables. Okay? Flowers. Okay? And more will become scarce items if we don't take action they took soon. My boy. Rodney, I'm sorry. My son, Todman, was allergic to bees, and they stung him to death. Oh, Rodney. And my, my wife, Sodney, she took my daughter, Melodney, and left. Wait. It ran out of ink. That, that's not how that works. Anyway, I killed the bees that took my boy, but that wasn't enough. I had to wait for them all to die, to feel true vengeance. Ronnie, don't you see that this could be the end of humanity as we know it? I don't care. I'm going to be with Toddy now. Oh, <laughs> EpiPens just give you adrenaline. Please go home. No. No. Get off me in heaven. Money. Ah. Ah. All right, let's move on. Next to speak, we have Jerry Seinfeld performing a monologue from the B movie.
next couple of years, Dak Prescott is going to be another great quarterback of our time. Oh, come on. <laughs> It's a great impression of every Cowboys fan ever. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> like you can talk, Bears fan. Hey, you guys, uh, you guys want to hear my impression of Tom Brady? Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> Get it? Because he's the goat greatest of all time. <laughs> Five rings. Kiss him. Uh, that was seriously, guys. I, I'm so glad we formed this club. I mean, with the rise of nerd culture, it's been really hard to talk about sports without being judged. Oh no. What? Who, who is it? It's the nerds. Well, 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 look at what we got here. Well, this is just sad. A couple of sports fans in an art school and with a record turnout of three. Hey, if you, uh, if you guys aren't here to talk about sports, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Oh, yeah, no, sure, of course, yeah, we can talk about sports. Hey, Ryan, ask me about the game last night. How was the game last night? I don't remember, because I was too busy getting laid in World of Warcraft. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. What? What are you going to do about it, bench warmer? You disgust me. Sports are such a low form of entertainment, they literally rot your brain. That's not true. Every team has a story to follow. Tolkien, the Fellowship of the Ring. Now there's a story. Five points to Gryffindor. Hey, Ryan, ask me how much I know about Tom Brady. Um, how much? Uh, not a lot, because I was too busy reading erotic fan fiction between R2-D2 and Wally. Wow! <laughs> I just don't understand it. Why does everyone lose their mind over a, a couple of guys fighting over a ball? What's that about? Yeah, Ryan, ask me what I lose my mind to. Mm, what? Sometimes I take my Wiimote, and if I find the right spot, I Whoa, hey, whoa, whoa. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, yeah, sports sucks. Yeah. yeah. Sports sucks. Sports sucks. That's it. Oh. You can't make fun of us for liking sports. Sports bring people together. When the Cubs won the World Series, the whole city of Chicago came together. It didn't matter who you were or what your political stance was. Alex is right, guys. This must be some common ground. Guys. I have a confession to make. I didn't buy my PS2 to play Kingdom Hearts. I got it to play Madden 04. EA Sports. It's in, it's the, in game. the game. Hey, Ryan. Yeah? Ask me about the greatest day of my life. What was it? Playing catch with my dad. Huddle up. Huddle up, everyone. Oh, and closer. Yeah, they closer. do this in yeah. football. Nice. Closer. I'm Nick Latacina, and I'm the writer of Sports Nerds. So Sports Nerds is about kind of uh, the change of culture that Columbia has. Uh, in high school, uh, like sports were considered, you know, something that's very cool. But when you come to Columbia, uh, it kind of flip-flops and nerd culture is kind of the norm here and I kind of wanted to write a sketch about that and how how that difference you know flipping those two cultures on their heads and you know their statuses and stuff like that it was great to finally walk into the set and see all these colors and this clash of sports and and nerdy stuff they had like Batman stuff and they had Patriot stuff it was really cool to see those two things intertwine and also just like, it was very colorful, which, which is the, what I was really looking for in the set design. It was really cool seeing my sketch go from, you know, just a thing that was on a piece of paper all the way to being produced by the producers, being shot by the directors. It really got me excited because it was kind of like seeing the, the, the vision come to life. I would definitely recommend anyone who is interested in writing at all. I think that sketch writing is really important to understand how to structure a scene and how to really get the rhythm of a scene. So even if you're not a comedy writer, uh, I definitely recommend taking the sketch writing class. I'm really excited to pe for people to see Sports Nerds. I think it was a really fun sketch that has a lot of interesting ideas and I think anyone who goes to Columbia will really understand the joke. Truth, you can't hide it any longer. The world will know. 
<laughs> you can't keep me in here. See you at slop time. <laughs> so what do you know? Hello. I said, what do you know? Too much. I, I hacked the Pentagon. I found evidence that aliens are real. They had pictures, autopsy reports, interviews. It's all there. Did you hear me? Makes sense. This is what the US military puts people who know a little bit too much. Well, uh, what do you know a little too much about? Jazz. <laughs> Excuse me. It's a beautiful art form. Uh, uh, okay, but I know that aliens are real and that their leader is Steve Buscemi. And I know that this is a C note. Why are you in here? Well, it's the real reason. In 1992, Bill Clinton perfected a weapon so powerful it could change the entire world. A, a bomb? No. Jazz. Oh, shut up, Lucky, you nut job. You'll never understand what it's like to be unable to tell the world what it needs to know. You do? Oh, thank God, someone else in here knows too much. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know a little too much about jam. Come on. There are many different types of jam. There's grape, peach, Strawberry, even blackberry, what ridiculous. What are you two doing in here? Oh, that, that is a great question. How do you make jam? Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully I have all the ingredients right here. Okay, okay, first you need two cups of sugar. Guards, guards, you put me in the wrong cell. I know that aliens are real and that they invented kids pop. Guards? Guards, uh, I knew that this, this is grape, yes it is. Aliens! Aliens? Immigrants? America? 1776? Freedom? Freemasons? Mason jars? Jam! <laughs> Why would they put me in here? I actually know something. You're not the only one. What? Let me guess. You know a little too much about knitting. Or... I know where every penny of the U.S. black budget went, what happened to Edward Snowden after he hacked into the NSA, and who actually killed Kennedy. Whoa. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here because of friends. They turned you in? Oh, no. Ross would never do that. Maybe Chandler. He changed after he married Monica. Oh, Ross. Oh, my God, you mean the show. So no one told you life was gonna be this way. Guards! Guards! Yeah, what do you want, inmate? You gotta help me. I actually know too much. No, this prison is for people who know a little too much. You don't know too much or you'd be dead. I will break out of here. The world will know that aliens exist. Aliens? Alien. Please don't. Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> Beaver. Woodchucks. Wood. Trees. Dirt. Earth. Climate change. Jazz. <laughs>
first day. What's wrong, I don't honey? want to talk about it. Well, the Goldwings are coming over for dinner, so you better be on your best behavior. Oh, yeah. Uh, what are we having? Meat. Again? What kind of meat? Oh, just something Jeff brought home. Better not be possum. Yuck. Oh, look, your father's coming. Stepfather. Stepfather. Oh, you kids. There's my big beefy boy. Ugh. These are so gross. Disgusting. What's that? You smell blood. Billy, did you get another paper cut? No. Oh my god. Rachel, I didn't know you were a woman now. Oh my god, you're so embarrassing. Why are you like this? Well, what's going on? Well, Rachel got her first period. Hey, Mom. <laughs> That's gross. Oh, I can't believe my girl's growing up. Do you want me to show you how to use a tampon? Can you all just leave me alone? Okay. We'll talk about tampons later. Gross. What do you want? I know she means well, but why does she have to be so embarrassing? I guess you're right. But I don't want to grow up. I feel a lot better. You really do know a lot about periods. Oh, that's right. You lived through the worst one, the Cretaceous. Okay, let's get ready for dinner. Billy, get in here. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, the Goldblum said they'd be here 15 minutes ago. Weird. What do you mean they're already here? Oh, uh, Jeff. Jeff. I'm Shannon Smith. And I'm Bree Bracey, and this is The Weekend Chronic. The House recently passed a bill which will repeal Obamacare and replace it with Trump Care. Huh, would you look at that? A group of old white men took something amazing that a black man made, made it shittier, and then called it their own. <laughs> Some pre existing conditions not covered under Trump Care that were covered under Obamacare include anxiety, depression, pregnancy sexual assault, and acne. But still covered impotence. <laughs> With Trump care passing in the White House, 24 million Americans are expected to lose coverage. That is, of course, unless they switch to Verizon Wireless. <laughs> Verizon, the nation's largest LTE network. <laughs> Recent polls show the president having the lowest approval rating ever in the last First of his 100 years. Wow, it's like no one actually wanted him to be president in the first place. <laughs> in wake of nuclear tension, several Japanese warships have joined US carrier groups off the Korean peninsula. When asked for comment, a Japanese spokesperson recalled the ancient proverb, keep your friends close, keep your enemies who drop 36 kilotons of face-melting superweapon on you even closer. <laughs> A new legal battle may leave Kentucky as the only state without an abortion clinic because there's nothing more Kentucky than being born there against your will. <laughs> Kevin Spacey has been announced as the host of this year's 2017 Tony Awards. For those of you who want to be as talented as he is but don't have the money for his master class, please welcome Columbia College Chicago's Miss Melody Odramatique. <laughs> Please call me Mel. So, uh, Mel, what brings you to Columbia? I will be offering a new acting course and would love for everyone to sign up. Divorce is pretty pricey, especially when he takes absolutely everything. Uh, okay, well, so what are some tips to becoming a great actor? Uh, well, be persistent, put yourself out there, and some days you just have to look yourself in the mirror and ask, is that really you? <laughs> or is it that llama that keeps trying to tell you to give it all up? <laughs> My course begins next semester. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, um, what are some other tips? Uh, don't half-ass anything. Like that one time I readied for myself for the cat's play. I ate cat food and peed in the cat's litter box, and they just kept saying, you're not in the cat's play, and stop licking yourself. You're not an actual cat. All I do is give and give and give. When will I receive? When? <laughs> All right, well, we have time for just one final tip. Uh, love yourself. <laughs> because Frederick won't love you back. <laughs> Mel, are you okay? I'm a changed woman, Frederick. I promise I'll stop stealing all the neighborhood dogs to make a doggy carousel. <laughs> all right, well, thank you for coming on. Ta-da, it was all an act. Please sign up for my class. I desperately need money. <laughs> Melody Ojermatik, everybody. A group of Unity, University of Victoria students recently uncovered the North America's oldest settlement and were amazed to discover that this 14,000-year-old settlement still had cleaner drinking water than Flint, Michigan. <laughs> Spirit Airlines has once again been voted the least popular airline after the last three years. When asked to the company, Spirit uh, just shrugged at us and made us pay 50 bucks. <laughs> Columbia College has increased security this week after a student threatened to blow that place up with his fire mixtape. <coughs> but seriously, please be safe. <laughs> it's that time of year again where students are graduating and moving on to different states. Some of these states include California, New York, loneliness, depression, and Wisconsin. <laughs> The NFL Draft wrapped up its festivities this past week, an event where the world's best black athletes are walked onto a stage where they will be auctioned, excuse me, drafted, to be one of 34 plantations, <laughs> sorry, franchises, where they will work in the field, oh God, play on the field for their white owners. <laughs> A cat from Denver that had been missing since last June recently turned up at a construction site in Dallas. When asked about his journey, the cat responded, meow. <laughs> a high school boy has made over $1 million selling custom socks, which is a lot more productive than what most boys do with socks. <laughs> Environmentalists and the globe can breathe easy this week with the EPA's only being dropped 1% for their budget. Here to discuss with us is local farmer and environmentalist, Clint Wildman. Bang, bang, boom. Sorry, I'm late. I was busy uh, greasing up my tractors. That's all right. So uh, can you give us your thoughts on the environment? Oh, well, it's deteriorating, Shane. <sighs> Farms are becoming more and more difficult to sustain with all these deep trenches. I tell you, it's been so long since I've been able to erect a proper silo. Uh-huh. And, and what are your thoughts on the claims that Scott Pruitt, uh, EPA director, cares more about conserving his money than conserving the environment? I tell you, that Pruitt guy only cares about the milk on his table. What he doesn't care about is who's doing the actual milk, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, yeah. Shannon? Uh -huh. <laughs> we need experts in this field, experts who have experience spreading their seed all over the land. Oh my. And, and what are your thoughts on the claims that the White House doesn't think global warming is, a, uh, is, is actually reliable, is, is a real thing? I tell you, these politicians are dirtier than greased up pigs. Just <sighs> global warming is real, Shannon. God, I tell you. Just thinking about it gets me hotter than a loose cock in a hen house, I tell you. <sighs> well, do whatever you need to make yourself comfortable. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do, Shannon? I'm gonna protect Mother Earth. Okay. I'm gonna lock eyes with her, and I'm going to farm her right. Oh, and she is lucky to have you. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get back to them fields. I gotta go plow my farm. Can I join you? Sorry. Only I can come on the farm. Thank you, Clint Wildman. <laughs> For 
for Weekend Chronic. I'm Bree Bracey. And I'm Shannon Smith. And we'll be right back. <laughs> producer for Freak Out. The producing class is obviously responsible for producing sketches, so that involves like marking scripts, making like script breakdowns, finding props, setting up props, uh, and working with the actors and directors to make sure that the sketch can come together. My name is Dustin Baker and I am a producer for Freak Out. We have made three digital sketches. We're actually making the third one right now. Every class is kind of working on a different aspect of like the live show so that when we all come together it's like a huge like production. It's probably the most like realistic like class you can take. Like I actually kind of felt like oh this is probably like as close to being a producer as I'm going to get until I'm actually maybe a producer. Freak Out is a really great class to take because it shows what it's really like to produce an actual sketch comedy show. Uh, what I've learned a lot from it is just really how to work together with people and plan ahead, try to figure out what potential things could go wrong during this sketch and what can we do to make sure those things don't happen so everything can run as fast and smooth as possible. It's like a very like community vibe. It kind of really feels like this is like the big thing that the TVD department does and like for the first time I feel like I'm actually really involved with Columbia. Yeah, so Freak Out's vibe is a lot of fun. It's uh, collaboration is probably the biggest part of Freak Out. Uh, it's just like a lot of people coming together to do what they love. It's a great time. Freak Out Live is on May 6th. Hi, welcome to Beef Belly Burger, home of the whiskey soup. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, actually, I'm not here to order. I was wondering if I could yeah. talk to you. Uh, hello? Uh, what? Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm here to inquire about the team member position here at Beef Belly. Uh, 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 what are you talking about? The job opening. Um. Are you the guy who called earlier? Yes, that's me. Uh, I was told to come in later. Uh, sorry, it took so long. Got little legs. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, okay, let me go talk to my manager. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Don't succumb. You left that life behind you a long time ago. Be strong. You can do it. <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is where you belong. Okay, so I no. talked to my manager. Oh, my God. 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 Hi, welcome to Beef Belly. What can I get for you? Yeah, let me try the double cheese bird burger. Bird. Bird. <laughs> what? We don't have that on the menu, sir. But I'd be happy to pass along that request to my manager. Mm, mm, no. Mm, not again. <laughs> no! Okay, jackass. Hey, hey, man, don't do it. Oh, 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 I'm working, I'm working. What? Wait. Oh, God. Oh, all right. Oh. So I talked to my manager, and she said you're qualified. That's it? You're hiring me? Uh, hey, I'm just relaying orders, okay? If this were up to me, it, it would be so different. Huh. Okay, well, uh, uh, I guess that's great then. Um, I can't wait 
Can't wait to. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Sorry. Are you are you okay? Yeah. No, I'm fine. It's uh, probably just some indigestion. <laughs> probably from that rice I had earlier or something. Okay. Yeah. It's probably... Oh. Oh. Are you sure? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. My ID. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. Have it. Here's my ID. Oh. There you go. Okay. Uh. T Dove. What's your first name? Uh. Right. Um. Yeah. It's um. It's trash. Uh. It's family name. I come from a long line of trash. Mm. Okay, and so you have this seizure condition? Uh, well, in the community, uh, the scientific term is spasmodical headbanging, but I guess if you want to be offensive. <laughs> Look, I love with you. I really need this job. I got a family to feed. My sister has cancer, okay? Mm. Uh, I think we'll call you. What? But I came all this way. Come on, give me a chance. I just, I don't think it'll play out. We need someone who's serious about the serious, position. Serious? Hey, it's that boy. Oh. I'm looking for a job. <laughs> um, you're hired. Oh, yeah, here we come. Whoa. <laughs> Pigeonhole again. <laughs> Your leader, King Bear! Yay! <gasps> My fellow bears of Friendship Forest, the bunnies have been scary. Very, very scary. Mm -hmm. Their hugs are too strong. So, as your leader, I'm issuing martial law. All rainbow bridges will now be closed until further notice. I will not take questions. Hi, Sleepy Bear from the Nap Times. This seems kind of naughty. Naughty? How could this be naughty? Look at me dance. Oh, look at him. <laughs> he has a point. Um, hey, Good Bear here from Honest News. This seems cuckoo. How are we going to get lollipops if the rainbow bridge is closed? We cannot take any chances. How go and security is soup's important? But but this order gives you full power over the playground, the gingerbread house, and the Senate. Yes. But I'm doing it in order to protect our f way of life. Mm. We will bathe in the blood of our enemies. You don't f with Friendship Forest. I mean, uh, look at me dance. Oh. oh, I'll also be suspending freedom of speech until further notice. Uh, uh, Fuzzy Bear here from the Fuzzy Chronicle. What does freedom of speech have to do with the bunnies? Well, Fuzzy Bear, how am I supposed to concentrate when other bears are saying bad things about me? You're a mean bear. This is Poo Poo. You're just trying to be the boss of us. See what I mean? Look at me dance now. Oh, oh, oh you just said my sad. You can't dance your way out of this one, King Bell. Oh, don't be mean to him. Look at him dance. Uh, Gossip Bear here from like Teen Teddy. Sleepy Bear, kiss my mom. Just saying. <gasps> it's true. We're in love. Uh, yeah. So, like, uh, King Bear, what's your favorite color? What? Oh, thank you for asking. I think I would probably say red. Like the f***ing color. Like the color I'm going to paint these streets if any bunnies dare f with our military. They want our sparkles and they want our f***ing jobs. Uh, I, I mean. Don't you dare. Look at me dance. <gasps> I love it. This is dumb poo poo dumb butts. Can't you see what he's doing? Yeah, but he, he, he's just dancing. No, he's being tricky, tricky, tricky. Oh, uh, what's this? Backup dancers. <gasps> Five, six, seven, eight. Leaders always lead, and the 
follows blindly follow. That's how we don't stop. Stop! I said stop! Can't you see that he's a bad bear? This is Friendship Forest. A place of love and hugs. Anyone can come here. Unicorns? Bunnies? Even Tom Brady. But like, he dances so good. But can't you see what he's doing? Friendship is friendship is friendship is friendship. Bunnies aren't the ones we should be afraid of. We should be afraid of him! <gasps> Seize that bear. No, please stop. Careful. You're not gonna get away with this! I already have! I mean, uh, look at me dance. <gasps> We're good. Oh, guys, I don't know. The girls' locker room? Hey, it's unlocked. Get down. I don't know, probably their boobs. Cool. <laughs> Great winning spike, Tessa. Thanks, girls. What a game. I hit that one girl right in the boob. <laughs> boobs. <laughs> so, Tessa, did you see who was at the match? Garrett? No, it was the guy you think is cute from chemistry. <laughs> I have chemistry with a lot of cute guys. You're going to need to be more specific. When I see a guy with a big phony dick, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, of course uh, you're amazing. <laughs> oh, I saw this super hot dude at the grocery store over the weekend. Oh yeah, did you talk to him? No. I just walked right up to him and yanked on his banana, if you know what I'm saying. Almost pulled it right off. Oh my God, you're so cool. I've gotten close to a guy's banana before, but I've never yanked one off. Well, when you're a 10, they just let you do it. By banana, do you think they mean? Mm -hmm. I think they do. Okay, so Tessa, what other stuff have you done? One time, I threw this party and when this guy fell asleep, I whacked some of his butt hair off. His scream was so sexy and made me want to do it more, so I did. <laughs> he just let you do that? I mean, he was sleeping, but when you're popular, they let you do anything. Try it. Just grab him by the butt hair and rip it off. That was me. She ripped my butt hair off. <laughs> I'm gonna try it. Yeah, me too. I know. Let's make a pact. To surprise wax our boy toys butt hairs off. <gasps> Yay! Girl, Girl pact! <laughs> hey! <laughs> we, uh, we heard you girls talking. Uh, what are you saying? It's crazy. Relax, relax. It's just locker room talk. Yeah, I mean, you can't hold us accountable for what we say in the locker room. Oh. <laughs> well, what were you saying is inappropriate. You, you can't do that stuff to guys. What stuff? You waxed my freaking butt hair off when I was sleeping. Lies, 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 stop. lies, 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 stop. lies, 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 don't you guys understand this kind of behavior won't fly in the real world? Hey! Oh. What the hell is going on in here? <laughs> Coach Frank! Coach Frank! Tessie yanked off a stranger's banana. Do you have any proof? Well, no. Well, then I don't believe you. But she said she did. When? Well, just now. Well, then that's just locker room talk. You can't take it too seriously. Now, had she said it in a classroom or a hallway, then that would be a completely different story. But, Coach Frank, they waxed my freaking butt hair off when I was sleeping. Oh, Thomas! Oh! Oh, Thomas! It sounds like you are spreading rumors about the coolest girl in school to become popular yourself, Thomas. No, Coach Frank. Not cool, man. I know, Coach Frank. Not cool. I know, Coach Frank.
Now get out of the girls' locker room, you perverts! Aww, uh, do you guys want a hug? No. You don't want to give a hug for Tessa? No. Whatever. Come on, girls. Courtney's boyfriend's outside mowing. Let's go rate his body on a scale of one through ten. My boyfriend won't care. <laughs> Five. Three. What? Negative four. <laughs> What? Stop. What was that? <laughs> Get away from me. Hey, Welcome back to the Hound News Shopping Segment. I'm your host, Sammy Joe. Now, unfortunately, Pamela Wilkinson is no longer with us on the show. But don't fret, because today we are very excited to introduce to you my new co-host, Michelle Walker. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am very excited to be here. Today we're, we're gonna... introducing Donald Trump's new line of women's clothing, Alternative Style. <laughs> I guess Mr. Trump truly thinks he can do anything, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, he is our president, and I choose to respect him and his decisions. Well, if he's making the clothes, then who's running the country? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this show on the road. <laughs> yeah, no, I am really eager to be here today. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, have you seen the whole clothing line? Oh, yes, I, oh, I've only seen bits and pieces, including this fabulous sweatsuit set. <laughs> But as you know, I was just hired yesterday. So the first item of clothing in the alternative style line are the working women pants. Yes, <laughs> these are professional pants for the everyday working woman. <laughs> these pants are made from the finest Egyptian cotton. <laughs> so we're taking <laughs> Egypt's cotton, but not their people. Huh. <laughs> okay, um, it looks like it has pockets big enough to hold exactly 78 cents. Wow, <laughs> so thoughtful. <laughs> For the working woman who forgot her place? What? Or lesbians. Okay. Or for lesbians. <laughs> Moving on to the next line. <laughs> this is for the woman who prefers to stay at home and work out instead of work. The active wear for them. Well, actually, I think that women can work and work out. Both me I... and Michelle are wearing this line. You're really not going to let me finish a sentence, huh? And I gotta tell you, this American-made material feels great. That's right, Samantha. <laughs> this material, it just feels light and it's breathable. And it's made from Chinese mountain bamboo. That is correct. American-made bamboo. Oh, it says it right here on the tag. It says Chinese mountain This bamboo. line comes in a diverse amount of colors, including yellow, brown, and our most superior shade, white. Get your affirmative action wear today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's so exciting. Okay, so we have had a professional clothing line, workout line, and are you ready to see alternative styles intimate? I sure am. Sammy? Wow. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness, this is so soft. Oh geez, and it, it, it looks like a bathrobe and, and it looks like it's actually made in America. That's right. This is made from hand-picked cotton. <laughs> and if you go online and order now, you'll receive $50 off your order using the promo code TRUMP1. Wow, these are just so nice, and they look so roomy. And you know the best part? They even have a hood! <laughs> what the, what the hell? Would you like to try a new self-checkout lane? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah? sure. Yeah, great, great. Uh, 
Um, I'm very excited about our pasta dinner date tonight, Wendy. Yeah, but I can't believe you forgot to buy pasta. Well, <laughs> two boxes of Blue Hill fettuccine noodles. Oh, that's uh, that's different. I guess they want everybody in here to know what you're buying, huh? Uh, all right. Please completely insert your card. Oh. Um. Guess they don't plan you taking it out too early, right? Well, there's there's one thing I'm good at: it's inserting my card. Uh, oh, well, maybe if you wait until the machine's fully satisfied before taking out your card, they'll probably... Card decline. Please retry. Oh. Uh. Card holder. Curtis B. Roque. Insufficient funds. Declined. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what this is talking about. I have, I have money on this card. My mom put money on this card. I mean, where's the volume button? What? Your mom pays for your things? Well, you know, I could just buy this and your mom could pay me back later. Uh, no, 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 that's really, that's fine. Um, I think I have a coupon for Olive Garden. You have selected request information. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Um, hey, ma'am, could you please help me just so I can get my card out? Curtis B. Roque, insufficient funds, I, yeah. account balance, negative $32.53. Oh, oh, ma'am, please, can you just help me so, so I can, you I don't... You have selected card activity. Card activity? Previous no, transactions. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, ma'am, please, I, I can tell that everyone knows that I don't have money on this card. I would just like to go and leave, please. 12 cans of spam a lot spam. Stop, stop, stop. not spam. $16.89. It's not like... One whip it, real good, genuine leather whip. It's a box. $49.12. <laughs> I'm not really feeling yeah. this, so we could just do this another Some time. Some other time. One bottle of Pinky in the Pain hemorrhoid cream. Two dollars. Or not. Oh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I don't know what this is talking about. I, I've been hacked. How to Live Through Public Anxiety, a book on self-love and acceptance. Three hundred and eight dollars and fifty-eight cents. <laughs> Would you like to hear more? No, please. No, 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 no that, that, that's fine. Wait, wait, why don't we, uh, let's just get out of here. I know a guy that can get us free hot dogs at 7-Eleven. Based on your previous transactions, Curtis, I suggest... Suggestions? Really? Handies wet wipes for your dirtiest handies. Nutties, corn nuts. I'm allergic to corn and nuts, so... I know. What? <laughs> Ma'am, please! I, uh, this is the third failed date this week. that fake scandal about me fake stealing a baby from Dwayne the fake Johnson. But as always, the public does not believe you. If you smell la 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 la, what the Don is cooking. Honestly, 
This is the guy we elected. Shockingly, he's somehow worse than expected. I know, right? <laughs> he thinks he's a genius, but he's got no clue. If only we were that ignorant, too. Staff. Racist, bigots, homophobes, all ignored in his defense. But God forbid a woman has her dinner with my pence. We want things to be better. We want to see real change. But no one that checks Twitter and the media is estranged. We try to make it funny. But it's hard to hide the pain. But wait, now I've got the answer. We just have to wipe our brains. Yes. I want to be ignorant with you. Willfully ignorant with you. My life would be so much easier if I was ignorant with you. He criticized Obama, said our country needed more. But when it comes to leadership, he's too busy yelling for. Clinton used her own email, so we can't trust her for sure. Cause Mar-a-Lago's dining room is so clearly more secure. We want things to be better. We want to see real change. But no one fact checks Twitter. And the media is estranged. We tried to make it funny, but it's hard to hide the pain. But wait, now we've got the answer. We just have to wipe our brains. I want to be ignorant with you. Jasper. We'll believe ignorant with you. My life would be so much easier if I was ignorant with you. <laughs> and for the last time, this is my real hair, believe me. We should not be divided. But he's left us all astray. You must go with one small blow. While Trump can grab away. How can you not see it? It's right in front of your face. We tried tripping each other. They've already won the race. They've already won the race. Get them real tired of playing this jackass. <laughs> I was ignorant, if I was ignorant. 